Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm Robert Sherwood and I want to go over the bad seed. If you're watching this video, you have purchased a micro bad seed or a full frame. They're identical as far as how you install them. Just one is going to take a little more digging and one we can't ship in a box. It has to be on a pallet. So depending on the size water problem you have, which model you want to go with. Okay, so here's your standard sump pump. I just want people to see, you know, the basics here real quick. This is the switch. When the water goes up in the basin, and we're gonna use a house basin for an example here. And I'll tell you how I ended up coming up with my design, why I had to come up with my design out of necessity, and then later share it with you guys and patent it. So, when this is sitting in a basin, a sump pump basin, as the water level goes up in the basin, the float goes up. There, it clicked and it's running. It'll run till the water's gone, it drops, it shuts off. The standard basin is tapered like a V. It's got a taper where it gets smaller at the bottom. That's why so many homeowners are putting bricks and blocks in the bottom of their sump pump basin in their basement or their crawl space. It's to get this pump up where you have greater diameter and you're displacing more water. So it'll you know, help reduce how many times this is going on and off. Now this is a Liberty pump here. This is a, a Zoller. And yes, that's the correct way of saying Zoller. It's a fourth generation family business. Very similar trigger distances, I'll, I'll say. Completely two different mechanisms. Now this is the number one thing that wears out in a sump pump, is the switch. And you can't send it off and have it rebuilt. It's just not cost effective. You throw them away and you end up buying another sump pump because it's cheaper. When you pull one of these out that's been in for a couple years, they're pretty nasty. And a lot of times they're hard to take apart. But if installed in our unit, they're gonna run for, for years, if not decades, and I'm gonna explain why. Okay, so I, I explained how this doesn't displace enough water. And I explained the trigger on a sump pump. And that's the number one cause of sump pump failure is this trigger mechanism wears out because of just the constant, think about every rain event, this basin. And as the water level comes up and the float goes up, water level's going up, float's going up, float goes on, pumps the water down. This just keeps repeating and repeating endlessly. That's what wears the sump pumps out. They wear out in the switch, which is unfortunate because these things are built to, to go a decade, if not decades, okay? I've, I have pumps in from, you know, going back to 2000, so 20 years. All right, so let's talk about the bad seed and the benefits to the bad seed. So we'll get rid of this because it's garbage. All right. So the bad seed, I'm gonna use a micro just out of convenience, a little easier to handle. It's fully assembled. And this is something I'm not gonna lie, I struggled with. And the reason why I struggled with this, shipping has been just a nightmare and to be able to ship something like this and have it reach the homeowner without being broken you know that's huge i hate buying something and i hate having to put it together so it meant the world to me to be able to deliver a product to the consumer where they could be excited for its arrival open it up and it's all together for them and again you know, as a consumer, when I buy certain things, that's one of the things that drives me crazy is when I gotta put it together because the manufacturer was trying to save on labor. 
So ours, at, at times we thought we were gonna end up having to put some foam inside because of the pump moving. And we did have some break in shipping, but we did some redesign and now none are coming back broke. So good news there. Here's a micro bad seed. It's got half inch holes drilled throughout the housing. Okay, so this chamber, the chamber portion is very long. Now, as the water is taken in through all this inlet here, the other side, and all the half inch holes throughout the housing. By the way, this is made out of culvert pipe. This is Boffman tile dual wall culvert pipe. It's crazy strong. I mean, it's not flimsy and it's not garbage. I mean, this is solid. You can drive over it if that's what you want to do. I mean, if it's gonna be in a driveway application, it can be driven over. So I'm real happy with everything. We haven't had any come back that were damaged in that respect. Just again, the freight was a struggle, but we're there. Now, I will say this, the discharge end in the north can be tricky. Tricky. So we're gonna go over everything here. So real quick, this is, I'm showing you how you're gonna get it. This is it right here, bad seed, whether it's the micro. So there's a zip tie here and it, it's literally just holding on the directions to the pump. This one was a Zoller pump inside here because it got the Zoller directions there. Now the micro in the bad seed is a one third horse. If you go to the full frame in the bad seed, you get the half horse, and that is that is for serious water problems. So just uh, clear that up. So right here we have a rubber coupler. You got a clamp here and a clamp here. We got solid PVC stubbed out. This is fully plumbed on the inside. You don't have to take it apart. You don't have to do nothing. Right here, you could either use a screwdriver, a flathead, or you can use a nut driver, 5 16 and it fits the clamp. Now, this is the, the ease. I'm showing you how easy it is to install one of these. So you take the directions off, you dig a hole, you set it in. Now, I love the black flex line and it's made super, super pliable. So people are always worried about the direction that this is stubbed from because they design their system and they're thinking it's gotta be stubbed, you know, I need it stubbed 90 degrees different. Well, here I'm gonna show you. Look at the flexibility of our Schedule 40. So this is our Schedule 40 black and I love it. This is. As a homeowner, this is your only part of installation. Now this is not included, by the way. So, because everybody, whatever your discharge situation is, there's so many different variables to discharge lines. This is a 50 foot piece of our black. It's made by a tire, uh, car tire company and it's got great flexibility and strength and it's schedule 40. So, you know, I literally just take a, 5 16 nut driver when I go to hook this up. Done. Whew. All right, so that's how easy it is to install one of our bad seeds. Set it and forget it, man. They come fully assembled. Discharge line, I recommend our black. It's crazy flexible, super strong, easy to work with. It's really gonna help you. All right, so let's talk about options that you can go with. I actually kind of recommend some of these options too. So, all right, there we go. Get rid of that discharge line. That was just to give you an example and to show you how easy the assembly is. Again, that was a 5 16 nut driver I used, but you can also use a flathead screwdriver. All right, so, we talked about the water going up and causing the sump pump to run. We don't want it to short cycle like that. 
When it turns on, we want it to move a crazy amount of water so that for that switch going on, it was worth it. And believe it or not, all the costs, all the expense to running a sump pump, believe it or not, the electrical costs that you'll see in your electric bill, it's at the startup. The startup is what costs all the money. Once you get this thing you know, fired up, it doesn't cost anything as it free runs. The reason why I know this is as a licensed contractor, I've built a lot of different things you know, as a licensed builder, I've done everything in the home and I really specialize outside of the home, did a lot of commercial water features, got a good reputation for that. And we would put these in water features and they'd run all day long. They'd be in front of, say, a car wash wanted to draw attention to themselves and the cars going by would see this incredible commercial water feature. And I would have these run from morning to dusk and we'd just take the switch off of them. And then we just put them on a light switch and then they literally would run for how, however the, uh, how long, however long the uh, car wash was open. That's one example. And obviously we have homeowners that do the same thing. They'll turn it on in the morning, just enjoy its beauty and then turn it off when they go to bed. So I have pumps out there that run nonstop during the day and they're just going and going and going, but they're very affordable once they're up and running, they really won't cost you a lot in your electric bill unless they're short cycling. So, okay, this right here, water level goes up, floats going up with the water level. When it clicks, this chamber is gonna get pumped down. It's gonna take more water to fill this chamber than it would one of those, you know, big box store basins that I showed you. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I came up with this design was we were wearing out pumps. 99 out of 100 were failing because of the switch. And I said, we got to do better than this. So we came up with this design. Now I'm going to show you some of your options and I really recommend them. I mean, the more chamber you got, the fewer times your sump pump's gonna... Oh, look at that. It's time to go home. All right. Okay, so this is held on with a T25. So a T25 people call them star star bits but it's really not a five point it's a six point it's a t25 now once in a while when supplies aren't available and that's been the case lately a lot of times we have to use whatever's available but i try to keep this standard for you guys so the t25 so look how easy this is to take this end portion off All right, pretty easy, huh? So this, the inlet comes off very quick, super convenient and easy. So this is what I recommend, I really do. And I hope a lot of, a lot of folks watching this say, you know what, I get it now, I really do. He made it plain and clear. You can buy as much extension of this as you want. So if I was a homeowner doing this, this is a three foot piece. I'd, I'd order two foot. I'd order two foot. I mean, if you want three feet, we can ship it to you and we sell it by the foot. But let me show you how easy all of this is. Okay, so make some room here. Again, that was a T25 driver, guys, T25 driver. So this is a three foot extension. You, 
you have to buy one of the double belled couplers for the bad seed. We have the micro, this is the micro, and we have the full frame. So whatever you bought, I really do recommend this. So this snaps on and it snaps tight. So what did we just do? We just lengthened that chamber, in this case by three feet. Now think about how much we just cut that sump pump switch going on and off. The water now has to fill this entire length. The water's got to reach that point where it clicks that float on in that, in that sump pump and then it drains down this larger chamber. So I really do recommend the extensions on the chambers, I do, because now your sump pump's gonna probably last 20 years because the switch is not gonna be going on and off very much. It's gonna take a lot of water to activate it. Now, we have a lot of different things available for you. So let's go through all those. So some people don't have the ability to dig a hole this big and I get that wholeheartedly. I mean, we have the equipment, you know, like this beautiful Kubota U17. And if you're hand digging, you might opt for something a little easier. So this here is sold in both micro and full frame. What it is, it will reduce the size chamber down to six inch. This is in the event that you just wanna use a trencher and you wanna add a length of six inch, that's fine. We also can ship you the six inch too in dual wall culvert pipe. Now you will need the double belled coupler. These things hold pretty darn good. I didn't even snap it on and there we go. So again, Anytime you're connecting to the chamber, you're gonna need this double belt coupler. That's what I recommend for ease. It's beautiful, simple, quick. Now you might have your unit in the corner of your yard. So buy a corner piece. We sell them for the micro and the full frame. Again, this Demonstration is with the micro bad seed. You will need double bell coupler with every point of connection with your chamber. When you're done adding chamber length, with the exception of going to a reduced a reducer down to six inch, with the exception of that part there, you know, say we went ahead and made a made a corner unit, gave it a lot of chamber. There you go. And then you take your T25, that six point driver, a lot of contractors call them, you know, star drivers, but again, you know, it's six points. I think a star is five, five points. So, all right, guys, those are your options. So your imagination is your limitations. As far as adding height to them, this one's 24 inches, and this is how we ship out the micro. We ship it out 24 inches tall. People are asking for extra height. If you're going to add height, now this is obviously three feet, and I wouldn't recommend adding that much to it. I'd recommend having us build a custom, if that's the case. But if it's just a couple feet, this is what you're gonna use. You're gonna use a split coupler and some zip ties to hold it. You'll take this cover off with that T25 driver. Go ahead and remove it. Put your extension on. We don't use double belled for risers. We use the split couplers for risers. And there's a lot of reasons for that. We want it to be strong and sturdy and we don't want the riser to rock any, okay? So it's super easy to add a foot, 18 inches. 
When you start going beyond that, I do recommend a custom build because now your discharge is so very deep. All right, so let's talk about the north and the south and the differences there, because I think this is important. In the south, you get to use a check valve. I'm really jealous of you for that, by the way. But you guys do see tropical storms. I mean, you guys need, you guys need extensions more so than us here in the north. Your tropical storms, one of our bad seeds just went through a nine inch rainfall. And I, I was like, the, the, the guy called me on the phone. He bought more chamber and uh, he said the thing handled this nine inch tropical storm fantastic. So that's the good news. And that was a full frame unit with a half horse. So he was, he was, he already had something that was serious business. Look, these micros are no joke. If you want a half horse in a micro because you don't want to pay for the pallet and the shipping, I don't blame you. We got a screaming demon that goes in a box just like this micro and it's half horse and we can ship it to you in a box. That thing's big, bad, but in the South, you can, you can put in a check valve in line, you know, so you can just go ahead and attach your check valve, go to your discharge line. Why? is a check valve taboo in the north. Okay, so here's what happens. You, you have water in the line. The check valve is made to where the water won't go back into the system. In the north, if you hold water in your discharge line, it's gonna freeze in the winter time. So we can't use check valves. When the, when the sump system turns off, Whatever's in that line, say it goes uphill and it has 50 feet of discharge uphill. When it turns off, whatever's in that line is gonna come back into this unit. Again, in the south, you guys, you need the extra chamber because of your tropical storms. And if you ever have a power outage during those really crazy rain events that you see in the south, you're gonna want extra chamber length just for on-site storage of water. So that's a huge benefit. Now here in the north, we need the bigger chamber so that when all that water comes back in, it doesn't turn our pump back on. And then pump the water and fill the discharge line for 50 feet, and then it turns off, and then the water all comes back, and then it turns it back on, see? So that's a real issue here in the north. So in the north, I like added chamber length because you're displacing more volume of water and you don't have to worry about the pump going on and off, on and off until it burns up. You know, when you're short cycling a pump like that, it, you know, it'll typically last about 30 days, but it's nonstop. Again, in the South, you can use a check valve, but for your on-site storage, say you're on vacation and the power goes out, so the pump can't run, make sure you have enough added chamber for some on-site storage. You want on-site storage, especially in the south. The longer the chamber, the more water you can hold. Say the power's out, you're on vacation. Well, the switch is gonna click and the pump ain't gonna run with no electricity. But this entire, this entire chamber can fill, okay? It's not gonna turn on right here and then pump it down. That's not gonna happen if there's no power. You got a power outage, it's gonna allow the water to fill this entire chamber, which is bonus. So add some chamber length for some on-site storage in the event you have a power outage. And just in the south, you guys see those tropical storms and the rain is just insane. So I would recommend longer chamber lengths now, I preach the shorter the discharge line, the better. The pump is gonna move more water when it has less head. And then that's some pump talk, okay? So there's actually a formula. You can get on Zoller's website or you can get on Liberty's website, either or. They have the information there. For the height, that you're pumping it up and the distance 
that you're pumping that water. That's what they refer to as head. The more head, the harder this pump's working, guys. So it's gonna move its maximum amount of water if you can reduce the head. And one of the ways of doing that is in the, des in the design. You want to make sure that however you lay this out, say your yard's pretty flat. Usually these systems are going where yards are flat. Well then don't put it in the far back corner of your yard and pump it all the way out to the front yard. Instead, go ahead and put in your quad pack, run it to your sump, put that sump on the side of the house, not against the foundation. I don't do that, you never see me do that. But just, you know, put it more on the side of the house. Get it to where that discharge line is not as long. Sometimes you end up a little deeper when you do this, so you might have to go to a three-foot unit that we, we literally just put in the store, a three-foot unit. So um, that's something that we just recently had to offer because when people are working their way towards the discharge, a lot of times they're getting deeper. So as you're getting deeper, these need to be taller, okay? So you can build a system with no slope. I get that question all the time. What if you have no slope? No problem. I've done it, I've done it so many times. If I have the slope, if the slope is available, I'll take it because there's no doubt you're gonna move water quicker with slope, but no slope. So water, you know, water, seeks level guys right and if you put this lower than your trench so you can have a level trench all around your backyard and it could have a quad pack in it let's say then you get to this unit so this unit's 24 inches deep the quad pack is 16 inches deep it's all level everything's built level let's say because there's no slope this is the lowest point it's 24 inches, 24 inch deep, quad pack, 16 inches. So the water will lower in that 16 inch trench that's no slope and level. Water always finds the lowest point. This guy's gonna take care of it, it's gonna keep it dry for you and a quad pack will air prune any tree roots when you have that much air volume in a system the tree roots, they can't do nothing to your system. So if you're going by trees, a quad pack's definitely the way to go. So obviously I've been doing this, you know, for decades and I'm very passionate about it and I could just go on forever. But if you've stayed to the end of this video, congratulations and thank you for your purchase of one of our bad seeds. All right, everybody, until that next video.